What we love doing is finding men and women that God is raising up in the community as leaders and having them come up and share what God's put in their heart. We want that new thing that God is doing, amen? So give a warm welcome to Armando. Armando, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Pastor. So uh, sometimes people ask me when I'm about to speak in front of a, a crowd, you know, do you get nervous? And I, I think the importance of influencing others is more important than that. You know, we have to pray for more people to influence. You know, we can't be afraid for God to put us on the spot and get to share and get to burn. So revivalists talk about fire, you know, but, but what does fire do? Fire burns everything around it. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, I've never been under a leader that wasn't in some way crazy as all get out. You know what I'm saying? And I learned, I, I got saved. I got saved from a lifestyle that was um, gang violence. And, and I used to smuggle drugs across the border. I've been shot at. Some of the stuff about my testimony I can't even share because it's, it could get me in trouble or, or something like that. But but so when I came to Christianity, it couldn't be a form of Christianity that wasn't just as real. And, and that's what was situation with Paul. You know, Paul was doing the wrong thing with all his heart. He was totally giving it up for what he believed was the, was the right thing. But he was just going in the wrong direction. But God can use that, you know. And, and he wants to take people like um, Pamela and, and all these different beautiful people in this congregation. And he wants to take that fire that they out naturally have in their hearts and he wants us to turn it around and use it for good you know what i'm saying but it comes with a cost you know uh jacob jacob was a deceiver and he was fighting and fighting and fighting against god right to to win the blessing but by his own ways doing it by his own means by his own strength and and people talk about you know wanting to be used by god but god had to god had to completely cripple him before he could actually be used by God. And that's the form of Christianity. That's the type of call that we're, doing, we're, we're asking people to answer on the streets. We're tell, there was this kid, um, Justin was with me. And, um, is Justin here? Justin's not here. Um, and um, he was a youngster and he had never heard the gospel. And so I said, Lord, I'm just going to do a radical call on his life. I'm going to make it a difficult thing for him to say yes to. And I said, first of all, I said, look, we're not just Christians and say we're Christians and not actually being willing to lay down our lives for this. You know, we were willing to lay down our lives for things that were so dumb in the past, things that didn't even matter. And, and now God is positioned. If God is real and which he is, and, and that's why I have answered the call in my life, because he's real. How much more would I be willing to lay down my life now for him? And so, so you know, Christianity was beat down by, by, by the, a bunch of different agendas, a bunch of ideologies, and a bunch of different stuff. But in, I'm going to get back to the salvation of the kid right now. But, but listen, right now we're in a swing. We're in a swing back into where we can be a little bit more aggressive in our evangelism. What, what did Elisha say? He said, Oh, he said, oh, where is the God of Elijah? It's time now for us to ask, where is the fire? Where is that? Oh, God, where is the, the, the fire of Elijah? And it's time for us to begin to want to influence people. You know, I just want to impart right now because I think the fire and the revival is caught. You know, I can't sit you down on a Saturday and try to teach you how to be on fire for the Lord. You have to have a cause on your heart. You have to care enough to be willing to lay, to lay down your life. You know what I'm saying? We talk about taking up our cross before a God who was crucified in front of his mother, you know, one of his girlfriends and his spiritual son, and he died on the cross for them. And we don't even really understand, fathom what it means to lay down our lives for Christ. And the American soldier does. One time I said, man, I don't even think Americans understand anymore what it means for us to have to die, to lay down our lives for a cause. Because the Jews, their nationality and their, and their race are directly connected. And the Bible says we're grafted into that vine, right? But see, we don't even understand what it means to have to lay down our life 
for like what we believe in, for our creed, for our thing. You know what I'm saying? For the, for the, for the religion that we believe in. We haven't even been tested to that point. And we want to argue about spiritual gifts and we want to argue about speaking in tongues and try asking that to a person that if they actually speak in tongues in another country, they'll be killed for that. Ask them about what it means to be speaking in tongues. But we just want our next Subway sandwich and our Red Bull and I'll go and argue about some sort of weird theological thing. You know what I'm saying? And so right now we're in a swing where things are going in our favor. And when it comes to self-defense, I love studying about self-defense because it has to do with, with, I really believe that we don't understand how warlike we are to be, how warriors we're, we're supposed to be, you know? And, and we really are supposed, the first thing that, that Israel did when it left Egypt, what did it do? First of all, they armed themselves. So the second thing was they sacked the city and they took all its goods. And then they went up to the mountain and they organized themselves in a military formation. That's what they did. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's, we talk about being grafted into the true vine. What does that mean? I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> what does that mean to be grafted in, to be, okay, so who were the people that came before us? Who, what does that look like? When I, the reason why I'm a Christian is because I read my Bible. Because all I wanted to do was read my Bible. I was crazy, man. I, I, was, I was one of the most violent dudes you would see on the streets. You know, I have wounds on my body to prove it. My mama's there. You can ask her about it. I'm not proud of it, but I'm proud now that God is using that, you know. But what does it mean to be grafted into some, to be grafted into the bloodlines of Christ? Who were the people that came before us? David's mighty men. You know, the three that David was in war, they were in battle. They were face to face with their enemy. They were face to face with the enemy. And King David, he just whispers, oh, gee, I'm thirsty. And what did the three mighty men do? They stood up and they stormed into the enemy's lines. And they got him a cup of water to drink. And they brought it back to their leader. And what did David do? He was so blown away by that. He poured, he poured it out and he said, I'm, I'm not worthy of this because it was purchased with the blood of my men. You know what I'm saying? And we have amazing leaders. I, I would never run with somebody that wasn't a little bit crazy about the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And, and we go to these prayer meetings and, and there's hardly even anybody there. But your pastors are in the front, you know, weeping for revival. That's the type of people I want to run with. I've never been a part of congregation that was shrinking. I never have. I'm not bragging about that. It's just the truth. When we were in L.A., we were in revival. We took 12 youth kids, and we grew to 600 in, event, in, in a year and eventually to 900. But it was because we were all crazy. We were all willing to lay down our lives. We knew what our identity was in Christ. You know what I'm saying? You think about um, Stephen. Stephen... First of all, when Stephen passed away, when, when he was dying, he said he looked up to the Lord and he saw and Jesus was standing at his throne. There's only like another one other place in the Bible where Jesus is standing, welcoming him in. And Stephen said, whoa, I see God. But Stephen was just a table server. He wasn't anointed evangelist. He wasn't. He was chosen so that the other apostles could preach the word. To, to just serve, that's all he was. But yet he, was, he laid down his life for the gospel. And then we think about Paul. You know, Paul gave up so much but he, because he wanted a purpose in his life. He wanted a call in his life. He wanted to answer. He wanted a, 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 something that gave him the action that he was built for, that he was made for. And I believe that we're all I, I believe especially men man, and women too definitely are called to, they love to fight. You know what I'm saying? We need a good fight. And right now it's time for us to take the gloves off. and time for us to get crazy because everything is in our favor. It's time for the chiefs to rise. You know? It's time for the chiefs to rise up, man. You know what I'm saying? 
And we got the, I don't want to say crazy words or anything. I went to this high school and I was preaching and, and I started getting a little too wild. And I said, I was talking about, they call us radical, right? And I got a little problem with that because I believe that this is just our true identity. This ain't, this is, they haven't seen radical yet. Wait till we start facing swords, laying down our life willingly, willingly. You know what I'm saying? We t- talk about the scripture where the people that laid down their lives in Hebrews, you know, 34 down to chapter 12. You know, we, they haven't even seen radical yet. But it's time for us to rise up. It's time for us to catch fire. It's time for us to start burning. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I, I, the reason why God gives humility is key and so is love. The reason why God gives me the ability to be in these places because I truly learned how to fall on the rock. Instead of the rock falling on me. By nature, I'm a prideful dude. But I learned how to fall on the rock. I learned how to sit under radical people. I learned how to sit under people like Pastor David and Pastor Jeannie. The first time I met them, I went to, I'm not sure if they, oh yeah, this is when you prophesied over my brother. I wanted to go and get a prophecy for me, and then she says, boom, she hits my brother. I'm like, what about me? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But he's doing good now, praise God. And um, Jeannie was on the floor worshiping God, and Pastor David is like, um, one of my friends started trying to record the prophecies, the testimonies, and David said, whoa, 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 you can't record here because we have people that that are laying down, that are places where they could possibly lose their lives for preaching the gospel. And I said, whoa, man, I love that, you know, because, because that's the way we're supposed to be. Talk about taking up your Christ cross before a God who, who, stood, who was hung naked before his mom and, and his friends. And we talk about taking up our cross like if we understand what that means. We need to read our Bibles. If it wasn't for me reading my Bible, I wouldn't be a Christian because religious people just want to beat the truth out of you. You know what I'm saying? They really do. Oh, where's your, what are your three points and this and this? Man, I haven't even gotten to my notes. You know what I'm saying? I haven't even got, I, I don't even, you know what I'm saying? I have to preach what's on my heart. This is all, Pastor David told me. I said, well, I have this theological thing and blah, 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 because I have a revel- revelatory gift. You know, I like to get revelation, and I have the ability to, to um, see spirits, and, like on people, I mean, um, discernment. And with discerning, and I was listening to Patricia King, and she was breaking it down. She said there's gifts of utterances, and there's gifts of revelation. And I, I didn't know. I thought I was a prophet. But I was like, man, why don't I get along with prophets? Why don't I understand them? I'm like... What the heck's going on here, you know? But I knew I had a gift to hit the mark, and then I realized I had a revelatory gift. So I'm telling, and Pastor David goes, he goes, that little story's cool and everything, but I want you to light a fire. And I said, ooh, thank God, finally somebody asks for that. You know what I'm saying? Finally, there's a congregation that's drawing it out of us. Finally, the chiefs have some soldiers to raise up together so we can go to war because... Things are on a swing right now. So before, we were having to not take our Bibles to school before. And in self-defense, there's something that's called waiting your turn. So whenever somebody comes and gets the jump on you, you have to wait your turn to execute what's called a counter ambush. And you have to draw from without them seeing, and you have to execute a counter ambush. And right now, we are at a point where we're giving the freedom to execute that counter ambush. But Christianity isn't for the weak. It's not for, listen, love, I know we're supposed to love. People always tell me, brother, it's love that's going to get the job done. Listen, sometimes love is training a soldier to go to war. Sometimes love is a grandmother disciplining her grandchildren. Sometimes love is a father checking his son. That's love, man, and we have to, we have to re- rethink a lot of things. We have to stand up and be men in this generation. Women, we have to support our men. The elders of the church, listen, we need you. Revival isn't supposed to drive anybody out. 
The sons are coming back to the fathers, and I want to honor you, and I want to affirm you. The fathers just don't need, a, um, the sons just don't need affirmation. So do the fathers. Listen, you guys have been holding it down for us, and it's time for us to get down, and we need your prayers. We need your protection as mothers and fathers over us, because we're ready to get buck wild, amen? And, and uh, we're taking our gloves off, and, and the chiefs are going to rise up. And listen, I'm not nervous to speak in front. We, want, we have to want more chances to influence others. That's what fire is. See, fire burns other things, right? That's influence. Sometimes all it takes is saying the right thing at the right moment and within the right group. You know what I'm saying? And so right now we're in a swing, and it's our turn to, to do the counter ambush. Amen? Who's with me? You guys with me, men? Women, you guys with me? Amen. So, so we want to talk about being grafted in. We have to realize who the people were before us. You know, I study the prayers and psalms of the ancient men before me. I study David's mighty men. I study Peter who, when they were about to arrest Jesus, he cut the guard's ear off. I know that was wrong, but hey, Peter was carrying a sword. And, and, and Jesus loved Peter, man. That was his boy. That was his general right there. So he knew Peter had that sword, and, but he put his ear back on, right? <laughs> so listen, sometimes we're going to be Peter. I make mis more mistakes. I'm always getting rebuked when I speak at schools. In 2004, we weren't allowed to say the name of Jesus in schools. Oh, I used to serve with Jay Koopman. He, he goes to Atrox. That's my boy. My, they know Jay Koopman, right? Is he fire or what? Listen, I, 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 he was my mentor. He's been my mentor for like about 20 years. I got arrested for smuggling drugs, and he came to my house, and he told me, he goes, listen, he said, you haven't lost any value in my eyes. He said, if anything, you gain value. And that blew my mind. And I said, okay, I could run with a dude like that. You know what I'm saying? Because those are doors that no man can close. Pastor Clayton... No matter how mad I get at him, no matter how, how, how hard we argue and, and this, and, believe me, we bump heads. But, but I wouldn't serve under somebody that wasn't like, I can't, I can't run with people that aren't like that. I just can't do it. You know what I'm saying? And I love him. And, and these are the type of people that I want to run with. And believe me with all my heart, you know, God gave me the gift of discernment. Pastor David, man, he has the fire. And you guys are in good hands. Look at the risk he's taking, putting me up here and saying, go, give it your all. Man, that, that to me, from where I come from, that just produces in me a loyalty and an honor for him and his wife and for this family. You see, it's not, I can't even afford to get in my own way because this is too important. You know what I'm saying? We're bringing pe some people, oh, why you take them to Pollo Loco? Why you do this? Why? Who else is loving on people? Who else is bringing people with? Who else is trying to change the, the streets of Sunland? We're trying to do it, man. We got to get, get a little bit more crazy about it. They haven't seen radical yet. Amen? We're going to tear it up. Amen? So, so this is like I believe this is a restoration of what our identity is. I believe this is a, a restoration of, of what our identity is. This isn't just radical. It is, maybe it's radical, but you think about what the transgenders are doing, changing from one gender to another. I don't want to offend nobody, but that's pretty radical. You think about Muslims, how they're recruiting. I don't want to offend any, but they're recruiting by hacking people's heads off online. That's, that's pretty radical. And listen, we are Christianity standing in the face of those ideologies. We are that thing. We are the Christians standing in the face of those things. What did King David do? Man, who is this dude talking all this smack? Doesn't he know who has our back? He says, man, you're, you come at me with sword and shield. He says, I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. And today I'm going to chop off your head and the birds are going to eat on your flesh. Amen? So we talk about being grafted in. This is, this is who our identity is. These are the men that came before us. And yeah, we got a little beat down by liberal. I shouldn't say words like that. By liberalism. 
We got a little beat down by all these different things. But listen, it's our turn to launch a counter ambush. Amen? What's all I have to ask you, baby? Is that good? Okay, listen, I want to... I want to read a scripture for you. I want to read a scripture for, from the book of Hebrews. And um, do we have the scripture? Okay, I'm going to read a little fast. So let's see if you can keep up with me. It says, okay. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to talk about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of flames, and escaped the edge of sword, whose weakness was turned to strength. Amen, Pam? That's it. Well, that's what it's all about right there. Whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle, and rided out foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even greater resurrection. Some faced jeers, flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskin and goatskin, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. They were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us so that only together we would be made perfect. And I'm gonna, I didn't mention this scripture, but I'm going to read the beginning of chapter 12 because this is so important. Therefore... Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that's easily so entangled. I don't want to focus so much about the sin part. I understand we, there's things that entangle, but we're surrounded by such a great crowd of witnesses. Some of our saints that you know, some people that you used to run with, they're up there right now. My dad, who was so hardcore, I don't know. I've never met another person that was as crazy, that was as mean as a rattlesnake and hardcore as my dad. And he gave his life to the Lord. Wow. He was born in East LA. My mom and him met when they were like 14 and 17. When I talk about when I when I think about laying down your life for something, he's the one that taught me that. But he was super hardcore. I mean, he would fight at the drop of a dime. He was crazy. And, he, <laughs> and he's up there in heaven right now looking down on me. You know, he, he wants to see what I'm going to do with, with faith, with the faith now that we have. You know what I'm saying? We've been grafted into something great. We have a purpose far beyond any other purpose that the world understands. You know, in Corinthians, Paul wrote, those who compete in the games, first of all, the games back then would, could take your life. If you lost in the games back then, the Roman games, you would die. Paul said, those who compete in the games do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. And he said, therefore, I don't run like a man running aimlessly. I don't fight like a man beating the air, but I bring my body into subjection and make it my slave. So after I've preached to others... I myself might not be disqualified of the prize. Have you ever competed for something? Have you ever trained for something? I have. I played football since I was nine years old. Two years of college football, it was hard. The whole time I was running the streets, gangbanging, dealing drugs. But, but I know what it is to, to compete. And our team went to the championship I played for Cathedral High School. We have the sixth highest scoring record, and um, and we have records for the most points scored in a half and stuff like that. I was a captain on every team I played on. None of that compares to what what it means to to be a chief in God's army. This isn't just for me. Like this isn't this fire that 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 I have. It's not just. It has nothing to do with. It's for the church. It's for the body. 
You know, we got to burn things up. We got to be fire, man. We got to go out and want to change our city. We have to want to change our city. Otherwise, what are we doing here? God is real. You know what I'm saying? We have people that need to hear the story that you have to say. Yeah, I may be, I may be a bit radical or I may be a bit crazy, but listen, you got a story on your heart and you could reach people that I can't. And I can't do it without you. Elders of the church, fathers, the sons are coming back to you, man. Where is the God of Elijah? We need that fire back. What did, what did Isaiah, what did he tell Benjamin? He, the Bible says he, he stood himself up, he braced himself. And he said, in the morning, devour the prey. And then he said, at night, divide the spoils. That's the timeline. That's the youth and the, and the, and the, and the elders working together. You know, for, 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 it's time, if you got Pastor Clayton, man, it's, he, it's always a season for him to, to, to devour the, the prey, no matter what his age is. He's going to be devouring the prey to the age he dies. <laughs> That's just the way he is. He's a devourer. You know what I'm saying? But I've never served under leaders that weren't. Pastor Jay Koopman. You guys know Pastor Jay. His his mother was a was he shares his testimony, so I'm not putting him on blast or anything. But his mother was a prostitute. He used to answer phones for her. He's I've lived with him. I know his grandmama. His grandmama Rachel used to have a crush on me, so he's my brother. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about him, but he's my brother. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna get mad at me for that one probably. But <laughs> but you know, his mom, his mom was hardcore. His, his stepfather used to be a little bit ruthless, and, and he was a pimp. You know, his family comes from Hell's Angels. He was facing 10 years, but when God turned his life around, man, all he could do is shout and praise God for the love that he fills in his heart and for the fire that's inside of him. All of a sudden, this dude that didn't understand life, all of a sudden, he has a radical purpose. All he wants to do is, t Pastor Dave told me, what do you want to wear, a lapel mic or a, or, a, or, a, or a hand mic? Jay used to tell me, I want the hand mic because it's like a sword. Yeah. You know what I mean? All he wants to do is go around and lead people to Christ. And now you go to churches nowadays and, and, and you go to conferences and you try to learn about evangelism and they say, well, first of all, we don't use the word evangelism because it scares people. Second of all, uh, don't make them, don't make your small group or whatever meet once uh, every week because that's asking too much of them. And and um, don't don't ask them to preach because it's kind of hard to find preachers and and don't meet at homes because uh, it's you know people dirty their homes and what the heck are you even doing? What the heck are you even doing? Come on, man. How are we going to change anything? How are we going to change anything? You know what I'm saying? We were made for such a time as this. I thank God. You know, I know about Bob Jones' prophecy, and I, gave, I guessed every Super Bowl. I, I played football. I was in a row, six years in a row. I had all my money on San Francisco. I was even, I said, why does somebody prophesy something like that? What if they lose? Now people ain't going to want to see revival. And the Chiefs won. <laughs> but the, <laughs> the fix was in. I like that. But see, this isn't just about that prophecy. This isn't just about, I believe in generations. You know, this is when, when, when the dove landed on Jesus. Before that, Matthew gives a genealogy of all the people that came before. So this isn't just the prayers of now and us. This is 2,000 and some years worth of prayers where now we can rise up and we can do something about it. We have to be restored in our identity. We have to have our identity. We have to know, oh, you know, oh, some people don't know. Somebody told me, don't talk about being grafted in because that's a little confusing. We have to know what we've been grafted into. We have to know what came before us. We have to be told who we are. We have to read our Bibles. Learn about how the ancient men of old got the fire in their hearts. 
And we have to be willing to stand up in front of people. I have social I I don't care. Listen, I, enjoy, I, I wish there was more people here. I wish I was more challenged. I wish we could influence more people. I wish we were all burning everywhere that we're at. This isn't for, for any specific type of person or anything. This is who we are. You know what I'm saying? Pastor Dave, I'm going to. I want to thank you guys all. And, and who want? how many? Thank you so much. I think, raise your hand if you want to answer the call, if you want to be a new identity, our identity in the Lord. Come on, man. Let's answer the call, dude. We have to have a call to action. We have to, work, we have to do something. There's one more thing I want to share that came to mind right now. So there was a time when Jesus sent out the 70, right? And he said, ah, oh, don't, don't take any money with you. Don't just, just go out and, you know. If they don't accept you, just shake the dust off your feet. But going into the Passion Week, he said, listen, before I told you, don't take a money bag or, or a jacket. But now, he said, if you don't have a sword, sell your coat. This was going into the Passion Week. He t you can read about it. It says in the Bible that he told his disciples, if you don't have a coat, sell it and buy a sword. And then he told Peter, he said, Peter... Satan has asked for permission to sift you like sand. But I pray for you that after you have gained strength, you would give it also to your brothers. So this is a time right now where we have to be ready. We have to be armed. It's our turn now to counter ambush. Amen? That's who we are. We're, we have to know who our identity is in the Lord. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys, man. It's an honor to run with you guys. Thank you so much.